Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about a film that I saw recently, and you'll see it a week after uh, <clears throat> I actually uh, saw this film. Um, so at the time of recording, I saw the day, uh, so be September 22nd, so the very day I saw this film. I'm talking about it. Um, uh, it's a new film. Um, uh, in terms of it's, it came out this month. Um, it's a, a haunting in Venice. It is the third. Uh, you, um, you're, bleh, Hercule Poirot. Got all the list of the uh, people here. Uh, and some of the names are kind of. Uh, that probably will not be the easiest thing for me to, or stuff to say. Um, so it's good to have at least like the Wikipedia uh, page in terms of at least the cast and particularly the characters. Um, but in short, I enjoyed this film. I had talked about the other two, Kenneth Brenna, uh, Hercule Poirot uh, films, Murder on the Orient Express and... Uh, Death on the Nile. This film takes place 10 years after Death on the Nile. And um, this film is all, uh, it doesn't have as much humor as the other two films um, have. It's, you know, there are still um, moments of humor, but due to the fact that this uh, involves, like, you know, seance and uh, connecting to the dead or a potentially connecting to the dead. Um, you know, because, you know, there is a medium involved in this film, uh, in this, who uh, is invited to this old house of, uh, owned by a, an opera, former opera singer who hasn't uh, performed ever since her daughter died a year prior. Um, the woman's uh, name is uh, uh, Rowana Drake, and then her, her daughter uh, Alicia uh, uh, died and was essentially uh, uh, seeing the dead children of uh, uh, people who, well, of those who lived. Like, there's a story of how, uh, in this house, like, uh, there were children who, you know, were locked away by a doctor and a nurse, and how, uh, they all starved to death. And, uh, essentially, their, you know, their spirits are walking amongst the, uh, house to this day and everything, so, um... You know, it, so, you know, obviously that's quite a frightening thought, uh, no doubt, uh, that you live in a house and that is uh, potentially haunted. Um, but, you know, uh, Hercule Poirot, played by, again by Kenneth Brenna, is brought into uh, uh, this place uh, by uh, Tina Fey's character, um, Ari Ariadne Oliver. I don't know. Like red. So I was looking at some of the other cast members on them trying to because it's all in alphabetical order for all the cast. So I'm like, I gotta make sure I'm saying the right names. So apologies for anything of that sort at various times throughout this video. But you know, she's a old friend of his who. Um, it seems to be partially responsible for why he's famous. You know, she wrote books and particularly, you know, cases of, you know, that he has done. And so, and he is at this point has retired since Death on the Nile and has just been living in like Venice for some time. Um, And so uh, when this happens, you know, it's like maybe she'll get him to come out of retirement and then she'll be able to write, write a book, uh, particularly whether or not to see if uh, this uh, medium played by uh, 
Michelle Yeoh, uh, Joyce Reynolds, you know, whether or not she's an actual psychic or if she's a fraud. And during, uh, during the events of the story, you know, uh, things happen and you wonder whether or not she, uh, or, you know, whether or not what uh, the stories are actually true and whether, um, Renault's house, Renault's house is actually uh, haunted or maybe not. And if not, uh, there, you know, there's strange things going on, you know, eventually some people die. And then is this actually uh, uh, supernatural or is it uh, somebody killing people? Um, and what is the reason? Um, there's also various other people like uh, uh, Maximime, uh, uh, Gerard, uh, Ger Gerard, I don't, know, yeah. I don't know, his last name was never really said in the movie, so I apologize, Gerard, I'm pretty sure that's how it is, but you never know, some people, you know, it's pronounced a certain way, but Maximum, he's played by Kyle Allen, um, Camille Cutton is Olga Smitinoff, who is the housekeeper. Uh, Jamie Dorian is a doctor uh, uh, who uh, has uh, like, essentially like the PTSD from World War II because this film takes place after uh, 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 <clears throat> after World War II. And there's a Jude Hitt. Uh, Hill, who plays Dr. Sun, Ali Khan, who plays, uh, you know, uh, 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 the assistant, uh, one of her, uh, one of the psychic's assistants, uh, uh, her brother, or half-sister, half-brother, whatever. Wait, yeah, Ali Khan is, yeah, and, uh, Emma Laird, uh, they both play uh, uh, the psychic's uh, <clears throat> uh, assistants, and they're helping, and they basically want to go to America, specifically uh, St. Louis, Missouri, because of a film they saw during World War II, you know, uh, when the Americans came and kind of helped... Uh, help people they showed a film but they never saw the full movie and uh, uh Perot has a bodyguard uh Ricardo uh Scamarico plays him <clears throat> plays the bodyguard um <clears throat> there's also this man uh, Alessandro uh, Longo, who you see at the beginning asking him for help, but you know he's not taking any cases, and um, uh, Perot's uh, bodyguard is also a former police officer. Um, yeah, this film is a uh, very good. Um, I've seen how a lot of people are saying it's the strongest of this like, trilogy. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a trilogy like this. Is it going to, like, Breda, I don't believe he's going to keep playing this character. I mean, he could. Um, whether or not it'll be under his direction, like the previous two films, you know, because he directed and produced, you know, all three of these films that he starred in. Um, you know, whether or not that will be the case. Uh, uh, I don't know if he'll continue, but, you know, uh, I know there are people who aren't totally uh, thrilled with uh, uh, these films that Brenna has done, you know, you know, be it because they have, uh, they're used to, like, the Alfred Finney version of um, Murder on the Orient Express, 
or um, uh, Peter uh, Ustinov, you know, who played played him many times, um, or any of the other people. There's so many people who played uh, 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 Hercule Perot, uh, including Orson Welles, um, and also in, in various in various mediums, you know, there's television, there's film, radio, you know, this character and these books have been so popular that uh, <clears throat> uh, every so often the these stories get uh, retold. And again, I haven't, I've never really had a big problem uh, with the brand of films. I know there are people who don't like them. Uh, and again, it could be because, you know, the some of the other films be like Murder on the Orient Express or uh, other portrayals of the character of Perot or some of the other stories and like other adaptations just are seen as better. Um, again, I haven't seen some of the other stuff of Perot for many years. I know I have seen the Albert Fetty film before. Uh, I believe I've seen some of uh, Peter uh, Unistov's uh, versions, uh, at least a couple of uh, <clears throat> uh, a couple of those uh, films of his that he did. Um, I believe I saw Death on the Nile. Um uh, the, the the other version I think that was Peter Unistov um, that or I'm thinking of someone else uh, again there's been so many versions and adaptations of this character and this sort of like world um, and yeah this is a very good uh, film um, many do think this is the best of the three um, again it, this is the most serious I mean there are humorous uh, parts here and there, but not too, you know, uh, too, uh, you know, f uh, too fun due to the sort of like the sort of tone of the film and the story. Uh, it's very well done. It's, uh, the cast is excellent. I really, uh, I enjoy these films. I appreciate the work. That Brenna and his team, who has worked on all these films, I believe, for the most part, they have uh, uh, <clears throat> most of the people have actually um, uh, worked with Brenna on multiple projects. I know the uh, the score was done by somebody, someone different. Uh, uh, the other. Uh, Gutarn, I, I know I most definitely butchered her name. Uh, she composed the score for Joker and won an Academy Award. So, I do know that. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, but the music here was really good. Um, cinematography, performances, every, everything really is fantastic in this film. I don't really have any real complaints. I know a lot of people I've seen uh, complained about Death on the Nile because like, you know, we saw, we got to see Perot's wound and why he has his mustache and, you know, and some of the characters' backstories that we didn't totally need because, again, in a way, it's like, you're going to eventually hear about some of this stuff as the investigation goes and he just, you know, so to some extent, for people that that was kind of unnecessary, um, but you know it's it's an interesting uh, choice to take that story, um, and I think this again I haven't read any of the books, but I have uh, definitely seen the various adaptations of. Uh, uh, of some of the uh, films with Hercule Poirot. Um, 
and they're fun. Uh, you know, these kind of films are very fun and they're very enjoyable. I watched, um, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've watched stuff like this just for the enjoyment. And um, if I'm able to be uh, entertained, I, I say it's a, you know, a pretty good success for me. Um, again, not having read the books. Um, it's a, uh, uh, I'm sure it will be a very different uh, sort of experience for people who, you know, they know the source material very well. And so their <clears throat> thoughts on the overall quality and whether or not it's faithful to the actual original story. In this case, it's based off of a, a novel, Halloween Party, because this, you know, this, this story takes place during Halloween. And so, uh, you know, whether or not uh, this is as faithful to the book as possible, uh, I don't totally know. This film is 103 minutes, so it's very likely that certain things were not included uh, from a book that was a two, initial, first edition is 256 pages, so yeah, it's very likely that this uh, film <laughs> did leave parts out, but, it, but from watching it, all the essential main things that you need uh, are there, and also to connect it to the uh, other films uh, <clears throat> in this uh, Brenna uh, series. Um, again, I enjoy uh, uh, these three films by Brenna, but again, my experience uh, with this sort of this character in, in that kind of universe is again through the various adaptations of the books and um, uh, it might be I think it might be cool to uh, get some of these uh, books and read them uh, particularly Murder on the Orient Express be very interesting to read that book um, and I've never done that before so I think if anything else it'd be interesting just to see how uh just how that is as a, just as a story in and of itself, not a visual um, adaptation. Um, but yeah, this is a very good film. I I enjoy it. Um, whether or not you enjoyed it, if you've seen it, uh, obviously your thoughts could be very different from mine. You might not like it and. No doubt have a, have reasons why, be it you uh, have read the books, um, you've seen other adaptations of this character, and perhaps prefer uh, certain performances over others, and that's all fine. Uh, if you want to say, uh, uh, if you've enjoyed this film or not, if you've seen it, um, you may do so, obviously, in the comments below. Uh, same if you uh, enjoy a particular performance of pro uh, over others. Um, Alfred Finney is the only one who has been nominated for an Academy Award uh, for his performance in Murder on the Orient Express. And uh, while I've often thought uh, throughout these three films, uh, Kenneth Branagh did a really good job. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think... Uh, him not being nominated for an Academy Award uh, is something that's going to be very upsetting or disappointing. And I don't think Kenneth Brenna ever really thought he'd get nominated for any major accolades for uh, this. You know, I mean, it could have, uh, could be, I don't know. I don't know if this would be a major awards contender. Uh, I mean, you never know. It could get into some uh, category, uh, technical one. But yeah, this is a very good uh, film uh, for the most part. I have nothing really uh, against it. Uh, obviously, recency bias is uh, 
thing, but uh, of the three, I do think this might be my favorite. Um, again, this could change. I haven't gotten the second film. I don't know. I think I uh, when that came out, like on Blu-ray and 4K, a bunch of stuff was coming out, so I got other things, and so this that just kind of flew under my radio, radar in the sense of, got to get that, but um, who knows? I might get that uh, Death on the Nile. I do have a, a Murder on the Orient Express. I'll probably get, again, uh, Death on the Nile at some point, and I will, be, I will definitely get this film when it comes out. Um, and before I go, I will say, uh, I saw this film at the, at, a uh, Fleur Cinema, which, uh, is a theater I've mentioned before, which, uh, you know, it closed in 2020, and, um, it just reopened this year. You know, they, like, you know, want to keep people safe, even though after a while, you know, things were pretty back to normal around here um, in Iowa. And so it's like, you know, <clears throat> yeah, we can just, you know, <laughs> yeah, sit, sit here and there and whatever and just uh, uh, be apart from uh, other people, which uh, has never really been a big issue for me. Um, you know, if you're in a group of people like you and a friend or a couple people just go to a movie, you can see a, see a movie and then, uh, yeah, uh, but, you know, some theaters have, like, you choose seats, so if you choose so many seats, it'll X out, it would X out certain seats next to you. Uh, back in 2020, they eventually stopped that by the end of that year. And everything really went back to normal. <clears throat> uh, 2021 onward. But for some reason, they just stayed closed. And I'm like, you know, there's a bunch of movies they could have be playing. You know, be it, you know, some big uh, major films like this, for instance. As well as some smaller indie films and foreign films. A mixture of that. That's what this... Uh, Fluor Cinema, that's what that theater has, but uh, and it, it's not that far from where I live, so, you know, I really liked going to that theater as often as possible, and the prices weren't uh, stupidly expensive, which is always nice for, like, tickets and such. Um, I know some theaters and theater chains can be fairly expensive, but this one was not as expensive, you know, but... Uh, they're open again, so that's where I saw this, and I just kind of wanted to say uh, at the end, like, I'm, I'm really glad that this uh, theater nearby is back, because, uh, you know, for viewers, it seemed like it was never going to reopen, and on Facebook, somebody who I believe was the owner basically said, like, you know, if we don't open by 2022, by the end of the year, uh, basically don't even, you know, just, like, well, just, that's it. We're never reopening again. And I'm like, well, that's just unfortunate. But they uh, partnered with Fridley Theaters, which is a, a Fridley Theater is where I saw Oppenheimer, as well as a Return of the Jedi for its 40th anniversary this year. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I just... Uh, I'm just happy that uh, this theater is back open. Uh, granted, it seems like part of that is due to the fact that uh, uh, another theater chain has a hand in reopening it. But regardless, I'm just happy because it's nice that a theater near me uh, is available that isn't too far away. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I just uh, wanted to say that again at the, just by the end of this because uh, it's nice when theaters near you are around. You know, you know, you don't have to travel a certain distance, even though other the, the primary theater I usually go to to see films isn't all that far away. But still, you know, if there's one that's near you, 
that you could go to. That's always nice too. So anyway, with all that, uh, yeah. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all doing or have a, had a great day. Hope you're all having a great week and are having a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time. Uh, just please take care.